Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin. This is my co-host Teddy, and today I'm doing a showdown that I promised you guys uh, quite a while ago now, but I'm following through, and I always try to uh, fill all your requests for a different uh, GPU showdowns that you asked me to do. So this one is going to be the Gigabyte Extreme Gaming GTX 1080. This guy right here. It's a very high-end uh, GTX 1080 going up against another high-end graphics card, very high-end graphics card. It's the uh, AMD Radeon Pro Duo here, which is always quite fun to try hold up for you guys with its uh, all-in-one liquid cooler it comes with. So uh, as you guys probably know, I did the uh, Pro Duo versus 980 Ti SLI video uh, a while back now and a lot of you guys like that video so I thought this one would be quite cool to see uh, which of these cards come out on top because uh, the 1080 is extremely powerful and this is a very um, high-end model of the 1080 but the uh, Pro Geo is still a dual GPU graphics card so let's jump right in then with the specs and let's talk about the GPUs these guys feature so the 1080 is coming with the 16 nanometer GP104 GPU with 2560 CUDA cores and the Pro Duo is coming with two 28 nanometer Fiji GPUs with 8192 stream processors. So uh, back when I did the previous video on the Pro Duo, the previous showdown, I wrongly said that the Pro Duo features two uh, Fury X GPUs, and I'm sorry I got that wrong. I try, you know, get everything right. I actually had rid, uh, written down on my script the right answer, which is that it's actually two uh, Fury Nanos put together, uh, but for some reason I said the wrong thing. Uh, so yeah, just to write that wrong, that's uh, the truth there. It's two Fury Nanos put together, um, and they're sort of you know it's the fury nano and fury x are more or less uh, the same except there's a bit of difference there with uh, the power limits on the fury nano so let's talk about the uh, speeds then while we're there so the pro duo went up to thousand megahertz it's a uh, set clock speed or one gigahertz the uh 1080 on the other hand the extreme gain went up to 2062 megahertz in its oc mode so that's hauling. I was actually expecting it to be a bit higher than that, but that's still pretty high straight out of the box. So yeah, uh, they're pretty happy with that. It's going pretty hard, that's for sure. Now TDP-wise, the uh, Extreme Gaming 1080 comes with a 180 watt TDP, and the Pro Duo comes with a massive 350 watt TDP. Wow, uh, yeah, that's pretty high. Now let's talk about uh, memory then. So over on the uh, Extreme Gaming, the 1080 here, you're getting 8 gigabytes of GDDR5X memory at 10,400 megahertz on a 256-bit bus. So that's very, very fast memory there, but that still does not compare to the Pro Duo's 4 gigabytes per GPU of HBM at 500 megahertz on dual 4,096-bit buses. So... It's very difficult to try to explain this um, in a basic way without taking too long, but the way that just the nature of the memory um, of HBM, it's actually stacked basically on the GPU itself, or very close to it. So uh, the GPU die. So it's it's I can't really think of a basic way to explain it, but it's a very different type of memory. Um, I, a, a lot of people would consider it still superior to what you get on the 1080, the GDDR5X, which is still quite similar in some ways to GDDR5. But uh, yeah, let's not get into it too much because I don't want to lose those of you who aren't enthusiasts that don't know all about this stuff. But suffice to say is 
that both of these cards feature um, quite new types of memory um, and both lots of memory are very fast, uh, very high data rates and really, really good. So we'll just put it that way. Now let's talk about the coolest. We'll start out with the Extreme Gaming then. So I went over this in more detail in the unboxing video, but uh, basically this has an, an absolute gigantic cooler. 100 millimeter fans here. The middle fan uh, is sort of lower than the other two and under them, and it spins in the opposite direction. Huge aluminum heat sinks on this guy. Huge copper um, base plate there. Looks really nice. Has nice lighting on the uh, front and on the side. Nice back plate, and overall it's just a beast of a graphics card. Really big, uh, really chunky, really uh, sophisticated looking, and I quite like it. The Pro Duo, on the other hand, is uh, quite interesting in that it comes with an all-in-one liquid cooler. We're seeing a few uh, graphics cards now coming out like this, so I quite like that. Uh, so yeah, that's cool. Um, not much to say other than that. The, the water cooler will loop around, obviously, both GPUs, so being that it's a dual GPU graphics card, it'll mean that it runs extremely cool, but you will need to find somewhere to mount the radiator, uh, which is something I didn't do because I'm lazy. <laughs> so I just left it um, outside my rig. And it's actually quite nice if you have it pointing at yourself when you're playing a quite intense game. It's like a car heater on like a, a low setting or something. Um, it's just a nice sort of warm breeze, you know, it's quite good at night time. So that's, that's something you can do if you're like me. Uh, so without further ado then, let's jump to the uh, benchmarks now. Obviously I try to make this as fair as possible. So um, there's a whole bunch of different ones. Some are optimized for AMD, some are optimized for NVIDIA. And uh, obviously two different DX12 uh, benchmarks as well. So let's jump right in and see how these graphics cards perform. So very interesting results. Honestly, I was quite surprised at actually how well the Extreme Gaming 1080 did by comparison to the Pro Duo, even beating it sometimes. I was very impressed. This is a single GPU graphics card beating a dual GPU graphics card in certain tests. So that was very, very impressive. 
But if we add all the benchmarks together to get the average, because it's sort of the most important thing, um, you'll find that the 1080 averaged 84 frames per second and the ProDuo averaged 89. So five FPS better there for the ProDuo. But in a lot of ways, I still count that as a big win for the uh, 1080 as it is a single GPU graphics card and you have problems associated with dual GPU graphics cards. If you do not know what they are, I suggest you look into it. Micro stutter is a big one that you need to keep in mind. And uh, also there's a quite a big memory uh, difference between it. Even though the Pro Duo has four gigabytes per GPU, um, it means it's four gigabytes effective. You know, that's, it, they don't add together as of right now. So yeah. Big win, I would say, for the uh, the uh, Extreme Gaming 1080 there, even though it lost. But you know, considering this is a single GPU versus a dual GPU, very very impressive. Now let's talk about uh, temperatures then. So this one will be quite interesting because uh, you know the Extreme Gaming has a really really beastly air cooler, but the Pro Duo there obviously is liquid cooled. So how did they do in temperatures? So uh, yeah, really good. Obviously, both of them have pretty amazing coolers on them, so the, the temperatures were fantastic for both of the graphics cards. But for this, I did the uh, Unigen Valley benchmark on the Extreme HD preset. The Extreme Gaming GTX 1080 went up to 62 degrees Celsius at 44% fan speed, and the Pro Duo went to 52 degrees Celsius at 18% fan speed. So 62 for the 1080 and 52 for the Pro Duo. Now it's a bit different there in the fan speed. You have to take it with a grain of salt given that this is an all-in-one liquid cooler over on the uh, Pro Duo here. So that is just something you're gonna need to keep in mind that this was slightly, um, the, the, the fan speed thing there, you kind of need to disregard in some ways because they, they don't really compare, um, so to speak. But the temperatures do compare. Uh, so yeah, very good temperatures out of both. <laughs> that 62 out of the 1080 is fantastic. It's going to give you thermal headroom for days to um, do all sorts of overclocking. Pro Duo, on the other hand, not much of an overclocker as a lot of people out there know, but still very uh, low temperatures there, which is going to be good for those Fiji GPUs. Now let's talk about noise then. So which one was louder than the other? So if you were just going off those fan speeds, it may give you the uh, wrong impression because it's more to uh, noise than just um, you know the noise the cooler makes. So in saying that, I should mention the coil wine. Pro Duo, this one, it might just be the one I'm testing, but the Pro Duo has a lot of coil wine. And I know what you guys are gonna say. Oh, Kevin, you know, you probably, it was in those 1080p tests and the FPS was like, you know, going up really, really high. Of course it's going to, no, no, no. I'm meaning in general through all my tests, even the 4K ones where the frames are quite, you know, a lot lower than, than the other ones. Um, the Pro Duo had noticeably, you know, vastly more coil wine than the Extreme Gaming 1080 here. But in terms of just overall noise, um, coil wine aside, it was very, very close. I couldn't pick it. Both of them are extremely quiet. Uh, they went down to, I think, with a minimum noise that my sort of system goes down to. So yeah, uh, very, very quiet. But as always, I'll let you guys judge for yourself. So uh, we'll do the Pro Duo noise first, which is a bit bizarre because the radio is outside the case. And then we'll do the Extreme Gaming 1080 afterwards. So yeah, you can see noise-wise, it's very, very similar. Um, honestly, you're not going to be able to hear either of them in terms of the radiator is not going to spin up much on the Pro Duo, and the fans on this Extreme Gaming uh, didn't make much noise either. But as I said, the uh, coil wine is something to be aware of with the Pro Duo, although it's not that horrendous. Um, you can still drown it out for sure, but it is noticeably more than the 1080. Which brings us now to the conclusion, and who do I think wins this showdown? So this is very, very difficult for me, honestly, guys. Um, I really don't know what to say. The Pro Duo did win in terms of the benchmarks, and also won in terms of temperatures. But price-wise, it is vastly higher. It's very difficult for me to say, because the pricing seems to be all over the place 
with the Pro Duo where the Extreme Gaming seems to have somewhat consistent pricing. Uh, so I really don't know what to say and what to tell you guys. The Pro Duo did win in terms of pure performance numbers and the benchmarking as you guys saw. However, it is still a dual GPU graphics card and it was using vastly more power, you know, given the TDP difference and everything else uh, and the, the price difference. So basically, price-wise from what I've seen, there's about a $1,000 uh, $1, difference, Canadian I believe, over on NCIX between these two graphics cards. However, when we compare them in New Zealand at Playtech, there's only a $50 difference right now because the Pro Duos are on special. And it's been on special like that at that price for a while now. So I would say if you're in New Zealand looking at Playtech to buy one of these super, super high-end graphics cards, Oh, it would be a very, very difficult choice. I would have, you would have to really, really think about it. Now, to be fair to the Pro Duo, it wasn't made entirely for gaming. And a lot of people got grumpy at me about saying that as well. But it was still marketed as a, you know, it was like a workstation plus gaming GPU. So I obviously wanted to test out the gaming side of it, which is something that needs to be tested on it. So I'd say if you're a person that maybe wants to take advantage of the Pro Duo in some sort of productivity way or you know something else, you have workstation needs for it plus gaming needs, then yeah, I would probably go for the Pro Duo here in New Zealand from Playtech given that special price it's at right now. But for pretty much everywhere else in the world and for every other user, I would just go with the Extreme Gaming 1080. Less power, uh, similar performance, you know, about five frames a second in it, and you don't have a lot of the problems associated with uh, dual GPU graphics cards, and of course, a vastly lower price in pretty much everywhere else I looked in the world. So yeah, uh, I would go with this Extreme Gaming 1080. This is an excellent graphics card. It's probably the best 1080 I've tested so far. It's very, very impressive. I really like this graphics card, and I would go with this guy. Now I thank you all for watching this video and I uh, thank you guys for supporting the channel. Please uh, share this video around, it really helps me out, you know, new viewers come in, watch the video, like it, you know, check out my other videos and subscribe to my channel. It's really good to help me get out there. So if you're someone who's been around for a while and you're wanting to support the channel, that's the best way you can uh, by sharing my videos around, showing them to your friends, uh, sharing them on forums and stuff like that. I mean, who uses a forum nowadays? I suppose Reddit or something. Um, you know, that, that's really cool and that really does help me out. So when you guys do that, I really, really appreciate it. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.